What's up, Transit? Stuart here. I got a question for you. When you were younger, when you were five or six, and someone asked you what you wanted to be when you grew up, they're like, oh, hi, little boy. Hi, little girl. What do you want to be when you grow up? What was your answer? Do you remember? I remember. I'm sure you do. I, I said I want to be a professional soccer player, but um, look at me now. I'm here, so obviously that didn't work out, but I don't know what you said. Maybe you said that you wanted to be a Disney princess, or maybe you said that you wanted to be an actor or an actress, or maybe a professional athlete like I did, or maybe you want to be a rock star or an astronaut or a doctor because doctors make a lot of money, so who wouldn't want to be that? Or maybe now you'd say that you want to be a social media influencer because who wouldn't want to do that? You literally just like take your phone, take videos of yourself, and then you get millions of followers, and then somehow money just shows up. You just like get rich and you're famous just from doing that. Maybe that's what you want to be. I don't really know. But a lot of those things, when we're young, the reason that we think Think about those things as what we want to be is because we want to be famous and we want to be rich and we just think that's going to give us the life that we want. If we could just be rich and have enough money, we could get the car that we want and people want to hang out with us and we can get the house that we want and we can go wherever we want and do whatever we want. And that is the life that would really be satisfying. Like that's the life that we want. But as we get older and maybe now in middle school, you're beginning to discover that maybe, maybe that isn't the answer to the satisfying life, the full life, the fun life, the exciting life, the happy life, the joyful life that we all desire. And today I, I wanna read something from this letter that the Apostle Paul was writing this young man, Timothy. For us, it's, this, it's, it's first Timothy in the Bible. So we can actually look at this letter that he was writing him and he was saying, hey, I wanna give you some advice on life. And I think we can take it today. And he's like, hey, Timothy, not only this, but you should share this with the people around you and we're gonna get to share it today. So in 1 Timothy uh, 6, here's what Paul writes to Timothy about life. He says, listen, go and tell them that they should be rich. You're like, wait a second, he told them that? No, no, no. He said, they should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. All of a sudden, Paul flipped richness, flipped all, all these valuables on its head and say, those things aren't actually for you. What if you took anything that you had and you shared it with the people around you in need? And you thought, wait a second, that's not, that's not the life that I'm hoping for. I, I want to be able to use it for the things that I want and that I desire. And then Paul, the very next verse, he tells him why. And he says, by doing this, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasure. Your riches will actually be stored up by giving them away. He says they'll be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may, so that you may, so that I may experience true life. That, that we think we know what we want to experience the life that we want, but, but Paul's giving us this, this secret. And actually, he knows this because he knows that it's the way that Jesus lived his life. He came down as the son of God, but he still did, took all of his life and all of resources, and he gave them for the people around them and got to experience the true life. And he wants that for us. And, and, and I want that for us. And, and Paul that's, wants that for us. And so today, I just want to encourage you that, that maybe the life that you want, the life that you desire is not actually found by accumulating things, but actually by looking around the people around you and getting to be generous with them. Our lives are going to be better. Our lives are better when we are generous to the people around us. Our lives are just better when we begin to use what we have to be generous with the people around us. And it's not just about money. It's about your time, giving your time to the people around you, looking around and see what they need. Maybe what they need you to be generous with is your words. We have the opportunity every day to say kind things, encouraging things, uplifting words, uplifting things, to, 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 to encourage those around us, being generous with all the things that we have. And, and it may be words and it may be time and it may be money. But in the end, you and I, as we do that, as we're generous with the people around us, we will get to experience the life that is truly life. And so I wanna encourage you today, whenever, wherever you're watching this, to think of something small you can do today, something small you can do this week with the people who live in your home, your family, your neighbors, your classmates, that you can do to be generous with them with what you have and get to experience this life that Paul is talking about, that Jesus modeled.